one of my favorite concepts of sewing in general. Make clothes. How you want to make clothes. For instance, if you want to become your favorite vegetable. There's no stopping you, baby. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls. When I like something, I, <laughs> I have to become it. In that way, I'm not unlike that clip of the octopus disguising itself as an eel. Doing it out of both admiration and survival. Yep. I'm going to make myself some pumpkin clothes because on every level except physical, I am a pumpkin. I have ordered some fabric online. It says it's up for delivery today, which is splendid. I'm going to make two items because essentially the trajectory of my wardrobe is Miss Frizzle's closet. I'm not even mad. We're just going to jump into it. This video is sponsored by June's Journey, but we will talk about that a little bit later. For now, let us head to design phase. The first item of clothing I'm thinking for this foray into gourdcore is a pumpkin skirt, very inspired by longer Victorian walking skirts. So it's going to be this orangey copper color with sort of ridges sewn into it to make it look like a pumpkin. Next up, I want to do this pumpkin apron for all of my baking activities in fall. And by that, of course, I mean probably once. But yes, it will also be an orange color with green for all of the details. And with that, it is time to scoot on over to sponsor Rachel. Oh, hi. As mentioned, today's video is sponsored by June's Journey, which is a game that I wholeheartedly and genuinely recommend to everyone. <laughs> June's Journey is a free to play mobile game that has the most beautiful illustrated scenes that take you all over the world. It's a hidden object game, so you start off sort of easy. You gotta find the objects on the list, and then eventually as the level progress, it starts to look like my house during Halloween preparation. <laughs> Not only can you play that aspect of it, but you also have your own little home base where you can decorate the entire thing with buildings, trees, seasonal decor, which you unlock as you progress throughout the game. It's just a nice little bonus. June's Journey is also celebrating its sixth anniversary. Sixth. Starting September 30th, they're gonna have this live action web series on their YouTube channel where they actually invited real players from all over the world to take part. There'll be hidden Easter eggs throughout and at the end, you get to vote on who done it. And if you're right, you get a prize in game. So that is Juden's Journey. If you want to check it out and download it for free, you can head to the link in my description or if you like, you can scan this fun little QR code. Thank you so much, June's Journey, for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get back to the pumpkining. <laughs> okay, friends, I think I'm gonna start with the apron. Let's just dive in, like this old man that I saw on a reel the other day. Here comes the hurricane, bitch! Oh! So this is the pattern, this one right here, which is... Um... Oh, C! Okay. <laughs> Bust this baby open. By far the worst part of sewing. We'll get through it. Does this actually work? Oh yeah. Huh. Not me learning how reading glasses work. I don't know, I found these in an antique store and I thought that I would look like a sassy professor and I wasn't wrong. Tie end, waistband, bib, pocket, neck strap, and apron. All right, tight. Oh my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, part of the reason I gravitate towards buying vintage patterns is because more than likely someone 50 plus years ago already did all this bullshit for me. Okay, this is actually pretty simple. This is already pretty pumpkin-y, which is nice, <laughs> but a slight problem. Because there is still no sign of my fabric, I think what I'm gonna do is make today a pattern day. I'm gonna also make the pattern piece for the skirt, which is not unlike the skirt pattern that I have and have used about 572 times on this channel. I wanna make it a little bit more pumpkin-y. So to do that, I'm gonna take this craft paper, trace out the shape of each panel that I want. Tally-ho. <laughs> My process for this is kind of loosey-goosey, pumpkin juicy at first because I'm gonna go in after and make sure everything is symmetrical. So at this point, I'm kind of loosely sketching everything out, but also demonstrating some pure athleticism. Wow, Rachel, would you look at that form? Yeah, she's clearly a pioneer at the craft, Rachel. After folding it over and realizing it wasn't even remotely close, it's fine, we're just gonna cut out some more paper and tape it. Listen, okay? Sometimes creation is a matter of slapping things together and hoping that it works. <laughs> to mop 
lock up the waistband, so I took my waist measurement, marked off a little bit more than I need because I knew I was gonna be folding over the edges, drew out some pumpkin ridges, realized I did it backwards and I actually wanted the opening to be in the front, so redoing that. And then adjusting as I see fit. It is here, and it is Ooh, hefty. Uh, yeah. I got from Hearts Fabric, kind of like a linen-y, pretty comfy feeling. I got that for the apron, for the skirt. I splurged. You know what, I really don't like that word. Splurged. A significant amount of this orange <laughs> Ooh. wool coating material. It is so heavy. I'm thinking because this is going to be a pumpkin themed skirt, making the skirt out of this material would lend it to be a little bit warmer. You see how big my brain is? But regardless of that, it also doesn't matter because I also tend to wear wool skirts during summer too, because life is suffering. So now that I have my fabrics, we can get started. <laughs> Demonstrating that athleticism yet again. Yes, it's really quite amazing how she moves, like she's been corrupted by the one ring for the past 478 years. All of the panels or the skirt are symmetrical, except for the two opening panels where I wanted to have more of a 90 degree angle where the buttons were gonna go. All in all, I ended up making eight panels. I'm really in my fine random bullshit around the room to use as pattern weights era. <laughs> I modified the bib of the apron a little bit to add these pumpkin ridges and make it look a little bit more whimsical. But before I could cut out these ridges, it was time for the switchening. Rest until spring, my friend. Yellow. Oh, what? Good progress for today. 86% of the fabric cut out and ready to go, except for the green for the apron, but I'll figure that out. As much as I sort of detest this part of sewing, it feels good to be back in the game. It's been at least a minute since I've sewn something. So. Well, I shall see you on sewing day. Let's sew! Well, I told myself that this video is gonna be really cozy and calm. Meanwhile, I'd be like, <laughs> All right, today, start constructing these garments. And for the apron, I really can't do much until I figure out how I'm gonna do the ties and the neck strap. I think that requires a little scurry on over to my fabric stash and see what I have for green fabric. <laughs> This is my vaguely green section. I think this is probably gonna be my best bet. I don't know that there's a ton left because this is just scraps from another project. I think as long as there's a decent length here, which looks like there is, I think we should be okay. <sighs> okay, this is a tiny, teensy, tensy bit more complicated, so I'm gonna do this first. Let's freaking go. Wouldn't you know it, after all that scurrying, I ended up switching to this more green linen fabric. First, I had to figure out the length I wanted the end straps to go, which was pretty much just 60 inches. And then I decided to truly just wing it and kind of draw out this vine-like shape. And don't worry, I made sure it was all uniform width all the way through. But of course, after cutting this out, I realized that I needed twice that amount and I did not have a pattern piece. Sometimes I wonder why my brain's so big. 
that's okay. I'll just use this as a pattern piece and trace it out. Ah, once again, I am avoiding the consequences to all of my actions. All right, so the plan with all of these is to sew them along the sides and then turn them inside out. I genuinely don't know if this is gonna work for this because sewing curves and like round edges makes my brain feel like trying to log into AOL in 1997. <laughs> to be more specific when someone else is on the phone. No thoughts, just but we're gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna sew along the edges, clip the edges as well. I think you're supposed to do that when it's like a, a convex curve. I don't know. <laughs> we're just vibing, okay? We're just vibing. For the stress, because they were a bit thinner, I used the safety pin hack. Because the ties were significantly more chungus, I was able to just do it with my hands. Beautiful. All right. Oh, I cannot believe it worked. <laughs> it's a great feeling when you don't 100% know what you're doing, but yet you futz around, find out, and bring life to a creation, which is a sentiment I would imagine Victor Frankenstein also shares. I'm gonna swap on over to the skirt. And for that, I've got a bunch of panels. Now these all need to be sewn to each other. <laughs> We're doing the grunt work today. Let's go. It's pretty amazing to me, the difference of motivation between when I work on something as whimsical as this and then just a normal project. It is palpable. Fine. Make me sew a button up collared shirt and I will scream, cry, and probably throw up the entire time. Turning myself into a gourd. Sign me up, baby. Why? My machine heard the fact that I was excited for selling it and it went, you f what? You ready? Get up! Obviously this is a little bit larger than my measurements. That's because I'm gonna gather it only in certain spots. And then I'm gonna fold this over as well. I quite like it. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add some pockets because not once in my entire life did I try on a skirt that I made and think, boy, I'm so glad I didn't add pockets. In fact, it's been quite a point of misery for me realizing that in social situations I have no waist to put my hands. I'm gonna remedy that by adding pockets. These seams right here. I'm just gonna kind of make up my own pattern piece for a pocket from what I can remember from my other patterns that have pockets. You don't see it, it just kind of has to be this shape. Just need to be able to insert my grubby mitts into it, basically. Let's go. After I had the shapes that I was happy with, I very delicately seam ripped an opening and then sewed the pockets along the edges, leaving an opening along that flat part up top. I then inserted it, which would be the right side of the skirt, but then I realized that wasn't right and that the seams would be touching my hands, so I decided it wasn't worth it, so I worked it, and then I put my thing back, flipped it, and reversed it. So essentially from the outside of the skirt, it just looks like this weird mitten. Wham bam, pockets full of my hams. Ta-da! That was surprisingly really easy. I feel a slight tinge of shame that I don't do this for every skirt and dress. But we're gonna suppress those feelings deep, deep down. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on hemming this. It's me, Anastasia. Let's do it. I tried to do a little ringlet thing with my hair this morning. Listen, okay, I'm just trying to learn to love my short hair. Any comments regarding Little Orphan Annie will be acknowledged and understood. Daddy Warbox. Also, as a very important update, we have officially one leaf, one singular leaf that has changed colors. And who would I be if I didn't catcall the shit out of it? 
Oh my god, baby. Oh, you're beautiful. Woo! To-do list for today. The waistband for the skirt. I need to sew it, turn it inside out, do the stitching to make it look like pumpkins, attach the skirt to the waistband, 10,000 buttons. Well, I'm just gonna put the entirety of the apron as a to-do because it's okay. <laughs> I can do it. For the ruffle around the bottom, I'm not super positive what I wanna do. I got this stuff online. It's a bit more teal than I would like. What I'm gonna do, I think, is take that same green fabric that I made the straps out of, very long strips, much like trying to listen to any rules of any board game ever. Calculating ruffle length, oh, my body just shuts down. We have a lot of work to get done today. Let's do it. So in preparing the waistband, like a good seamstress, I sewed it, made the necessary clips for the curves, and then realized that it was inside out and I should have <laughs> sewn it with right sides together. So I whipped out the seam ripper yet again. Right so big. I also did the same thing with the bib of the apron. I added some machine threading to add the pumpkin ridge details. This included my brain just basically taking on Ross from Friends and yelling, Perfect! Then it's time to sew three miles worth of ruffles. I kind of just freehanded this and eyed it. I really don't care about symmetry or trying to make this look professional in any way. At the end of the day, it's just going to be a garment that I wipe my schmutzy hands on, so. Well, that took 57 years. Oh. oh! I added the lines, which are admittedly very hard to see. Ah. I think it's cute. I also think I look like a carrot. Hmm. What I might do, hit this with my airbrush. I would mix my airbrush paint with some fabric medium just so it's washable. But I think the ridges really do need to stand out a little bit more. I think embroidering probably would have helped, but ain't nobody got time for that. it was time to attach the skirt to its waistband and for 10,000 buttons. I like to use embroidery floss for my buttons. It's a little bit sturdier and you don't have to loop it through as much. I wasn't quite happy with the stitching, so because I have zero chill, I went in and embroidered the entire waistband. And when that was not enough, I went in with my airbrush as well. <laughs> and you know what? Clothes can be this and I won't feel bad about it. Finally, after 11 hours straight of working on these garments, I am calling it quits and it is ready for the reveal.
next day because we were out past the sun for the reveal shots. You know, another late night twirling in the field. So as always, I wanted to do a little wrap up. What went well, what didn't go well. Let's start with the apron. Here she is. Overall, I'm really happy with how this came out. It's just an apron. I'm just gonna be wiping my hands on it. No, it looks very cute from outside, but inside is a wreck. <sighs> Probably shouldn't have used linen or such a wrinkly material for this, especially where it's gonna be bunched up, placed wherever the hell <laughs> after a baking project. It's fine. <laughs> Dawn thy vegetables. If I was crazy, I would go over all of these lines with embroidery to make it more pronounced, but I already gave myself enough blisters from trying to do that with the skirt, so no thank you. The skirt, generally I'm really happy with how it came out, which is good because for a while there, I was getting a little nervous. <laughs> a really big color block and it was really orange and not a lot going on. Listen, if I'm gonna be making my own clothes, they need to be whimsical as hell. She is here. I was also a little scared when I was doing the weathering that it was gonna be way too much. A little extra. Not as noticeable in certain lights. If you want to weather your clothes with washable paint, freaking do it. Oh no, I've crossed a new threshold. Really like the stitching. I think the stitching came out pretty good. The buttons came out cute. Most of them are pretty uniform, except for I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that you're probably not gonna be able to unsee. The distance between this and this is different from all of the rest. I don't know how that happened. It wasn't me. It has good swoosh. It's really warm. Pockets. I'm so freaking glad that I put them in there. It makes great hand storage. I definitely have to wear a petticoat with this because it's wool, so it is a little bit itchy, uh, but that's okay. I like when you can have like a little, just a little peek. So anyways, that is it. I'm still having a bit of a hard time getting into the autumn mood this year. I don't know what it is. I think because it's been raining every single weekend. So we really haven't been able to do any fall activities. This project definitely helped lighten up my pumpkin candles and kind of getting into the color palette that I will be living in for the next two months. I hope that you guys had fun. If you're a member of the Patreon, you will have seen this apron in action because I did a live stream. Also, thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. If you want to download it for free, you can use the link in my description or use this fun QR code. That is it. I love you whether you're new or old to the channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload whoop, every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Essentially the trajectory. Give me Sitting is the opposite of standing. Thank you so lot, Savannah. Now I have it stuck in my head. Wow, best I've ever looked. Bam. <laughs> Look at that floopy ear. What are you doing? <laughs> Detective Frodo, he swore it was his last case. Mm-hmm. <laughs>